heat is overwhelming. Hippos can't sweat, but they do secrete a thick, oily, reddish fluid. This acts as a sunscreen and helps protect against infection. But he still needs to drink. Water holes are dangerous traps for thirsty animals. This one is staked out by lions. They're practiced giant killers. Together, they can take down an elephant. thirst, but he stands firm. can hold his ground if he needs to. And he forces the lions to allow him a share. Finally, he gets his much needed drink. is on its way. In the distance, a flood is creeping slowly closer. hippos dry paths. So once again the hippos have determined the course of the river's channels. changes once again, and all that the hippos had lost will soon return. Their resilience, determination and adaptability have carried them through the toughest of times. flows along the veins of the Delta, and life soon reappears. As the land recovers and the floodwaters peak, the channels created by the hippos carry the water to its furthest limits. It's they who perpetuate.
perpetuate the watery wonderland of the Okavango. Everything and everyone that lives here owe their presence to the hippos. Africa's river giants. The inlets echo to the sound of a mysterious song. A curtain of bubbles and a haunting call hold the secret to an ingenious way of fishing. This is bubble net feeding. A dozen whales work together to harvest the herring bonanza. Such fishing requires an extraordinary level of intelligence and cooperation. The lead whale dives first. She is the bubble blower. It's her job to find the fish. The rest follow in formation. Each takes exactly the same position in every lunge. Once she's located the fish, the leader blows a net of bubbles that completely encircles the shoal. Another whale calls to synchronize the group. By the eerie sound and the blinding bubbles, the fish won't cross this fizzing curve. As few as a hundred humpbacks have learned how to feed as a team like this. And this is the only place on the planet where whales fish in this way. You've got park vehicles coming through, you've got Trucks loaded up with charcoal, and that's why Jiminuka is just so tense about crossing the road. Well, if it was just him, he'd be fine. So he's just waiting nervously for a quiet time to cross with his whole family. I feel for him. After 20 minutes, we take matters into our own hands, and Lambert 
stops the traffic. Look at this, oh my gosh. No, there you go, that's confidence for you. With Chimanuka in charge, the orphan Morali is confident enough to venture out. Whoa. Oh, fantastic. Oh my gosh, look at this. The whole family. Moira and his mother are almost the last ones to break cover and scamper over. Absolute confidence, look. With all the youngsters across safely, Chimanuka can stop being the lollipop man. The boss showing us that despite there's a road running through, this is still his jungle. <laughs> I love it. It's a great relief to see the whole family across the road in safety. This area is more densely forested than the sections we've been in before. It's crisscrossed with gorilla trails, so there are clearly other families around. And Muguruka's arrival just adds to the numbers. Here he comes. Oh my word. Right down onto the road. Amazing. He didn't even, I thought maybe stop, he'd be a bit reluctant, but of course he came meters from me to see him out in the open like this. You see how big he is. Amazing. As they mature, young males begin to explore the boundaries of the pride's territory. Red has ventured out alone. <laughs> and blundered straight into the middle of the hyena clam. <laughs> Kill him. 
room for 20 hyenas. A pair of male lions is too much to take on. Red is lucky. Tartu has saved his cousin's life. Killing a buffalo is a risky business. But these wolves have hunted buffalo for hundreds, if not thousands of years. They know what they need to do. Storm and his pack have to attack from behind so they must get the herd to run. The buffalo know that if they stand and face the wolves, they have the advantage. Sometimes these standoffs can last for days. But if this strategy were foolproof, there wouldn't be any wolves. Eventually, the buffalo lose their nerve and make a run for it. I can see how the wolves are testing the buffalo, looking for a young animal or one that is struggling. During the winter, the buffalo have to break trail, running through the deep snow. They tire more quickly than the wolves. Scattering through the bush forces the wolves to split up and reduces their effectiveness. But Storm is not distracted. He's got a lock on his prey. It's a yearling calf. Storm is such a huge wolf, he's able to bring this 300 kilogram animal to a stop all by himself. But the herd scattering through the bush has led one of Storm's younger sons into his own solo battle. And he tries to grab the buffalo by the front and pays the price for this mistake. I hope he wasn't hurt. A broken bone would spell the end for him. Wolves have to be in peak form to hunt buffalo. He still has a lot to learn from his father. For a single wolf, killing such a large prey is dangerous. Storm is older and wiser. And once he's wounded the buffalo, he pulls back and waits for the animal to die. Just as they've done before, Diablo and the family have to deal with this threat. All the adults start to harass the caiman. As the cubs keep their distance, Sophia takes her position at the front, 
sizing up the caiman. Others move in to try to distract it. Diablo once again moves in from behind and goes for the tail. But the caiman refuses to back down. And then begins to fight back. Cubs panic and follow the adults right into the middle of the fight. They're in extreme danger now, so the adult otters step up the assault. The caiman tries to head for the safety of the bushes, but it's too late. He's outnumbered. The otters seize the moment. Incredibly, they overpower the caiman, some holding it down, others biting it in the head. After nearly an hour of brutal fighting, it's all over. The caiman may be dead, but Charlie needs to know if all the otters are okay. It doesn't take long to realize two of the cubs haven't survived the fight. Stuck in the middle of the action like this, the young, inexperienced cubs were no match for such a powerful and aggressive predator. The truce between otters and caiman has, for a brief moment, been broken. What impresses Charlie the most, though, is the incredible show of family bonds and physical strength the otters brought together to kill the caiman and eliminate the threat of it from their lake. 